It's the man that's cooler than a fan. I'm Daquan Young, and today we present 10 epic sports traditions that were created by fans. And a big shout out to John Smith for suggesting this video. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and join us in the comment section below, and let us know what other epic sports tradition that were created by fans that we should have included on this list. You see, sports fans, they make the game way better. Just think about it. Imagine athletes playing in completely empty arenas and stadiums. It's not that cool. Fans bring the energy and passion that make the game that much better. But what's the coolest thing a fan can do? Create a tradition that lasts forever. The Detroit Red Wings and the Octopus. The Detroit Red Wings entered the 1952 playoffs needing just eight wins to win the Stanley Cup. And what has eight arms? An octopus. So during the playoffs, two Detroit store owners tossed an octopus onto the ice. The Red Wings won the Stanley Cup that year, so the octopus seemingly brought good luck. Tending or watching a playoff game in Detroit is synonymous with seeing an octopus thrown on the ice. It began in the 1952s. Defensively, not too many options left for the old octopus to find its way on the ice. Only three more games here for this to happen. Took a while tonight, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, did I? Seattle Seahawks raising the 12th man flag. The Seattle Seahawks have the loudest fans in the NFL, and they draw more visiting team fall start penalties than any other in the league because the Seahawks fans provide such a huge home advantage. They're often referred to as the 12th man. So before every home game, the Seahawks have a special guest, raise the 12th man flag, and the crowd goes nuts. The 12s, there is the actor Chris Pratt, native of Seattle, raising the flag. And that always gets a tremendous response. They've been doing this for... Be afraid, away teams. Be very afraid. Wisconsin jumps around. House of Pain became famous for their 1992 hit song, Jump Around, one of the most iconic songs of the 90s. As everyone knows, it's a good pump-up song. You know who else gets pumped up? The crowds at college football games. The University of Wisconsin plays jump around before the fourth quarter of every home game. And the crowd, well, they jump around. along at Fenway. Home to the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park may be the most iconic ballpark in America, but none topped the Red Sox faithful loudly singing to the century-old song Tessie and of course Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. Good time never seems so good. Tile power during NHL playoffs. During a 1982 playoff game, Vancouver Canucks head coach Roger Nielsen was disgusted with the officiating, so he put a trainer's towel on a hockey stick and began waving it like a white flag, signaling that he surrendered. But Nielsen didn't know what was in store when the Canucks returned home for their next playoff game. This day, I still can never reach that point. Um, so it was a, a feeling that I think players um, dream about and it's a feeling that we all got to experience and really enjoyed it. And ever since that day, all NHL teams have used towels to rally their fans during home playoff games. Thank you, Canucks fans. And speaking of towels, the terrible towel. Legendary Pittsburgh Steelers broadcaster Myron Cope was asked by his bosses to help create a gimmick to sweep over the fan base. He and a co-worker decided to come up with towels, and they advertised them to fans on TV and radio. However, Steelers players hated the idea and feared it would jinx them in the 1975 playoff game against the Baltimore Colts. But Cope arrived at the stadium and saw this. Of some 1975, 
me Longshot to make it. He bragged that he would provide for the playoffs miracles. He emerged from the tunnel at Three Rivers Stadium. Fearless, brash, loyal, boy. The fans bought into Cope's idea, and the result has been thousands of screaming Steelers fans waving the terrible towel during both home and road games. Liverpool, you'll never walk alone. There are a few things that sound so glorious, like the Liverpool FC crowd singing, you'll never walk alone. The song was featured in the Carousel musical, but became popular in the UK after Jerry and the Peacemakers released their own cover in 1963. Liverpool fans began singing it, and former team manager Bill Shankly loved it. And Liverpool fans, you'll never walk alone when it comes to admiring this tradition. Throwing the hats. There are multiple stories about who started the hat toss once a hockey player scored a hat trick. Some say that a Montreal businessman offered free hats to anyone who scored three goals in a game. Others say a Toronto businessman told a Blackhawks player he'd get a free hat if he scored three goals in a game. Somebody had to score three goals to get a hat, something like that. Fans started to begin the hat trick tradition because, well, they're the ones who throw hats on the ice in the first place. Big hit on the side wall is thrown, and the Davis got the hat trick. And the hats come flying down. Crosby, unbelievable. Valaket had lost his stick, lost his bearings, and he's really upset with himself. He scores. He blows it by Valaket for the hat trick. Sidney Crosby with his fourth career HT, his second of the year. And look at all the hats raining down here on hat night, Staggy. Yep. Giving it back at Wrigley. There are plenty of great traditions at Wrigley Field, but there's one tradition that's basically an unwritten rule. If the away team hits a home run, a fan has to throw the ball back onto the field. The story goes that Cubs fan Ron Grousel was the one who began the tradition of catching an away team's home run ball, only to give it back. And the tradition hasn't gone away since. Home run ball. Got all the way back into the infield. Kind of. Midnight Yell Practice. The Midnight Yell brings out over 25,000 loyal Texas A&M football fans for each ceremony. According to the university's website, the ritual was first introduced in 1913, but the very first Midnight Yell happened in 1931, with A&M fans rallying the team the night before every home game. Sometimes up to 40, 50,000 people out here at midnight. We have orchestrated yells to get our fans, and more importantly, our football team fired up for the game. About a quarter after 11 or so, we form up and we march in the cow field. The juniors do push-ups and we watch and then we... This is Daquan Young signing off. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.